Let's see if we can determine the convergence or the divergence of the infinite series 4n divided by 7n minus 1, all raised to the nth power, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Now, as with all of these series, you have to first decide what test do you think might be most applicable for this guy. So let, let's take a look at all of our different tests and let's start ruling some out real quick. Uh, clearly not a P-series, doesn't look anything like a P-series. Um, let's see, integral test, I don't think I want to integrate that guy. Uh, the, the nth term test, that guy has an nth power, so that, um, that'd be kind of strange taking this guy's limit as n goes to infinity with n's in the base and in the exponent. Uh, direct comparison test, I don't see anybody immediately I would want to compare him to, especially with the inequalities and, and all that kind of stuff. I try to avoid the direct comparison test whenever possible. Um, I might could do, re oh, well, no, not, not geometric. It's clearly not geometric. But out of these three remaining, you might could make any of those three work. A ratio test is always a good universal test you could try to make fit or make work. Uh, the root test seems to me like the most practical choice here. Whenever you see nth powers, it's usually a dead giveaway that it's um, best done with the root test. Um, you might could maybe try to find somebody to compare him to and do a limit comparison test, but I think I'm going with the, with the uh, root test. I just think, I think that makes the most sense here. All right, so let's, um, let's jot this guy down and think about um, what the root test would tell us. All right, so what, what we need to do is if this guy is considered our a sub n, then we're going to take the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. Now, what happens when you do the root test is because most of your terms, if you're gonna use the root test, have a, a power, an nth power, the nth root negates that nth power and cancels it. So we'll be taking a limit. Let's do this down here. We'll take a limit as n goes to infinity of, now I'll write this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to erase this to, to write something a little bit more practical. But formally, it would be the nth root of the absolute value of 4n over 7n minus 1 to the nth power. Now, the reason we don't normally write it this way, and the reason I'll, I'll erase this in just a minute, is as I just got through saying, the nth power and the nth root will cancel each other. So really, we'll just have 4n divided by 7n minus 1. And in fact, I, that's what I think I'll write instead, just so it looks a little better. Now, it will be in absolute values. 4n divided by 7n minus 1. Uh, now, for our particular example, the absolute values don't really make a difference because our terms are already positive. But occasionally, if you had somebody that alternated plus, minus, plus, minus, the absolute values would uh, annihilate that alternating type term. All right, now we just need to see where do these terms go as n goes to infinity. Well, this would give you infinity over infinity. So we'd use L'Hopital's rule. We can drop the absolute values because the absolute values aren't needed here. Um, and I think after one use of L'Hopital's rule, it's fairly clear that this would be four sevenths, four sevenths. Now, what does four sevenths mean? What, what the heck does that tell us? Well, for that, we'll have to remember the root test. So hopefully you remember all the details that I, I haven't covered in this video, but the details about the root test. And what it said was that if this ratio was less than one, then that means this guy converges and not even just converges, he converges absolutely which I think I covered uh, absolute convergence in one of my earlier videos, converges absolutely, uh, but especially converges uh, by the root test. Now, if this limit had been greater than one, the root test would have said that the series diverged by the root test. And if the series, or if the, I'm sorry, the limit rather was equal to one, then the root test would not have been applicable and you would have needed to go try a different test. But here, since the limit was less than one, then we can say that it converges absolutely by the root test.